there was this small detail that we got hung up on. We weren't seeing eye to eye. And like it started out where we were just kind of delicately butting heads together. And then by the end of it, like within five minutes, it just spiraled out of control. It turned into a huge shouting match. Welcome to Jobber's Masters of Home Service podcast, where successful business owners share their secrets for making your business more profitable and efficient. I'm your host, Adam Sylvester, owner of Charlottesville Lawn Care and Charlottesville Gutter Pros for the last 15 years. I truly believe that service entrepreneurs need to come together from different service industries and swap stories, share tips, and learn from each other. By getting together and sharing each other's successes and failures, we can help each other level up. And that's the mission of Masters of Home Service. On today's episode, we're discussing the truth about working with family. We have Zach Yurkowski. He is the owner of Montreal Contractors out of Montreal, Quebec. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. And Christine Hodge, CEO of Clearview Washing in Freehold, New Jersey. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. So you both are part of family business, and a lot of our listeners are too. And so I'm really hoping to connect with them on a unique level today. Zach, start us off. What does your business look like and how does family play a part of it? Yeah, so we're general contractors. We do bathrooms and kitchens. Uh, we started this iteration of the company in 2016. And my partner, co-owner of the company is my brother, Jesse. So very family oriented. Great. Awesome. Younger brother. Younger brother. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Christine, what about you? So I joined a family business. My husband and his father started the company almost 20 years ago. I joined the company almost six years ago now and kind of dove right in. What's been the most challenging part of working with, with, with family, Christine? I'd say the most challenging part is early on when you're trying to identify your role in the family business. Because when it's a family business and a family dynamic, everyone cares so much, right? Everyone cares too much almost. Mm -hmm. And so everyone becomes involved in everything, but then there are no decisions made. There's no good outcome. There are too many hands in the cookie jar. The biggest challenge and hurdle is identifying everyone's role and having the ability to like stay in your lane. Like we'll say that to each other, stay in your lane. That's mine. This is yours. Mm -hmm. I love your business because you have a CEO, you have a president, you have an owner, a co-founder. I, I love how you have different hats and everyone knows what the lane they're supposed to be in. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's so important, like you said, to have those roles and responsibilities well-defined because I feel like, especially at the beginning, it's this weird family dynamic that you're trying to shift into a business dynamic so you can have all the things that come with that, right? Power struggles and sibling rivalries and stuff like that. So it's so key to, to have those roles really well-defined and like structured responsibilities so that everybody knows exactly what they're responsible for. So it takes away some of that guesswork where you're going to have those little battles of, you know, no, this is my decision to make. That's mm -hmm. my, that's my call to make. So I think, yeah, like staying in your lane, like you said, Christine is so, so key. Because it's a family dynamic and everyone is so personally invested, the personal life and the business life become too intertwined. So you can have a family chat, like a family text thread, for example, and we're texting photos of our kids. And then it's like, well, hey, did everyone see the email for the callback? You know, or we, mm. we killed a tree yesterday and the customer's complaining and they want us to go back. I personally don't want to read that at 10 p.m. before bed. Mm -hmm. but, but because it's the family everyone cares so much and we have to shout it from the rooftops and everyone has to start working on something. And we had to say, no, we do not all, this isn't all of our problems and we do not all have to think about it before bed. We set very strict guidelines. The family text thread is for family text. We implemented, my husband and I, no texting about business unless it's an emergency and it needs to be handled immediately because your priority is not my responsibility. You know what I mean? Like it, because it's something that's on the top of your mind now, it's not my problem right now. But when I sit at my computer, I'll take care of it. For, in my case, it's not even my blood family. You know what I mean? It's in-laws. So I don't want to tell anyone what to do. And I don't want to discredit any work that was built prior to my arrival. But I want to help guide it in the right direction. And that doesn't happen overnight. It takes sure. years. It sounds like it'd be easy for a family dinner to turn into like a board meeting without having proper boundaries in place. So Zach, what about you? How have you learned to keep it separate? Emotions are high. What, 
What do you think about that? Yeah, so I think it's it's actually I'm I'm taking away a bit from Christine because I uh, I, I think that we probably need to implement that those those guidelines of of you know having the limitation on the group chats and stuff because we definitely probably bleed into that a bit too much. But I, I think it's so easy as a family because you have that you know intimate connection, you have that intimate knowledge of each other. Um, you know, especially with my brother, it's like you know we we remember each other almost being in diapers kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really easy for that line to. Be become blurred between the business and between the personal so it's easy for the emotions to get into it and a lot of the times it's emotions that really don't belong in the business right it becomes really this personal struggle so i think that can be probably one of the biggest challenges is just how easy it is for those lines to blur this idea that we have that everyone thinks they're working harder than the other people can you speak to that Absolutely. So it's all with a good heart, right? Like everyone cares so much about the business because it's the family business. So it's all coming from a good place without defining everyone's roles and responsibilities. Everyone thinks that they're doing everything. So I'm working harder than this person. He's working harder than that person. And then you kind of have to sit down, which we've done. Like, you know, you can feel tension. You can feel when someone's angry about something like, right? These feelings happen because you're family, you know each other, right? So all these feelings are happening and we say it's time for a family meeting and we'll like put the kids to bed. Everyone will come to our house and we sit in our living room and we just talk about, we actually bullet point what we're going to talk about. And then we talk about it and we remind each other, that's not you. I know you care, but that's not you. You have to trust that I'm going to handle it. And then I can also say, I know you care and I know you have a lot on your plate, but that's on you. It's not my responsibility. And we have to keep reminding each other. And it causes short-term tension, but it's something you have to take if you want success in this company, right? We're all doing this for the purpose of growing the business and all of us getting to a good place. So we have to take the good and the bad. And this isn't bad in the long run. It's just a change that we have to implement. And it's going to take a few tries. It's not in one year, you're not going to have the perfect family business. In five years, you're not going to have the perfect family business. You're always mm-hmm. going to be shifting and changing. But the purpose of our org chart was because there are so many family members in the company. And we had to say, no, I don't want to hear from everybody in the family when we get a call back. I just want to hear from this person. Mm, and so point. that's that's what started our org chart, and then we added in our other employees. One last thing, Zach. I want, to, I want you to touch on, has this ever happened to you where you're realizing that a decision is being made because of personal reasons, not what's really best for the company? Can you talk on that? Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting because like you said, Christine, right, it's, a, a, it's a, almost a benefit that you guys all sort of share that common goal because you want to see the other person win. It's not someone that, you know, I don't know if they're going to be here in two years. Do we really want to invest that much time or that much effort into it? It's something that you guys all want to create that legacy together and sort of have that family heritage for the company. And it can be a, a tricky place to get into if you realize that people aren't acting in the best interest of the company. And if people are sort of making decisions from a, you know, a selfish position. So you, you need to check yourself and make sure that when you're making a decision, is it because I feel something personally? Is it because I have a specific fear? I have a, an ulterior motive mm-hmm. um, and, and checking your partners for the same thing, right? Because every decision that's being made, you want to make sure that it's for the benefit of the company, that it's for the longevity of your business, and that it's really going to help the bottom line and help the growth. And that it's not just something that's going to, you know, take a, a load off of your shoulders because you're feeling lazy, or that it's not something that's going to benefit you directly in a personal way. So that's why it's so important to have those kind of roles and responsibilities and have that framework set up so that you know that when it's time to work on the business, that personal stuff gets left aside the same way that it would with any other company, right? If right. you were working in any corporate structure, any other company, you're not going to go in and say, you know, it's like, well, this is just like the time when we were seven years old and you took my Tonka truck, yeah. you know? It's, it's like you really want to make sure that those things are completely separate. Mm-hmm. 100%. This is great. Let's take a 30-second break. We'll come right back. I am not the earliest bird, but some of my staff loves a really early start. With Jawbird, my team in the field has every detail of every job and their whole day right on their phones. Routing for the day, scheduling job details while I'm still resting. It can be updated throughout the day. And my team picks it up immediately with little or no training. It was easy. It was seamless. Smoother from start to finish. Quote, schedule invoice and get paid. Start your free trial today at Jawbird.com. Christine, we'll start with you. How have you learned 
best to deal with conflict? What are some tips for our listeners to deal with family conflict in business? So the first thing is to not take it personally. It immediately, because they're related to you, you're taking it personally. When they could just be passionately communicating something to you that they would communicate to another employee. And if that was coming from another employee to you, you wouldn't take it personally. You would resolve it as a leader in your organization, right? So you have to maintain that professionalism and mindset of we are family, but not right now. Like right now we are colleagues and we speak to each other with respect. When things do escalate, which they will, it's just a guarantee when you're working with family, it's okay to say those things. Things are escalating right now and we have to respect each other as colleagues Let's talk about it tomorrow. When it's family, it's you just there's a piece of your heart so heavily invested in it, and you have to separate it and set rules and boundaries and prepare your mindset for how you're going to handle those challenges. Yeah. What do you think, Zach? Yeah. I mean, I I think that's part of the beauty of working with family is that you both sort of have that intimate knowledge of each other. You have that long history. Uh, you're both working towards that that one common goal and you really want to see the other person win, right? It's it's never really going to be a, a battle of, you know, who's going to look best in the boss's eyes or whatever. You, you're really both hoping to lift each other up. I, I remember there was an argument uh, that I had one time on a job site with my brother. So we were doing, it was probably our, our biggest project even to this day. There was this small detail that we got hung up on. We were seeing eye to eye and like it started out where we were just kind of delicately butting heads together and then by the end of it like within five minutes it just spiraled out of control it turned into a huge shouting match um we both ended up storming off site right away uh you know kind of split off in different directions we didn't talk to each other for the rest of the day which is pretty unusual uh and then the next day we met each other at the shop in the morning and kind of like tail between our legs awkwardly (laughs) sort of broached the subject and we were like we were trying to, to not put the blame on, on anyone else, but get to the bottom of it because at the end of the day, we had to get back. We had deadlines to respect. We had employees that were showing up, subcontractors that were coming in. So we had to put on that united front. And when we spoke about it, we realized that it really wasn't about the small detail. It was like four feet of railing that we were like, how are we going to attach it? It wasn't about that at all. It was so banal. And it was a lot more about that personal feeling behind it wow. and about our personal issues and, and the history and the past and our fears, right? And I feel like that's what creates a lot of conflict because it's inevitable. So if, if you're working with family or if you're starting a business with a you know a, a buddy that, that you met in, in trade school or whatever it is, there's going to be that conflict no matter what in life and it's important to know how to work through to resolve that because you're you're both working towards the same goal so it's important to remember that (laughs) having that argument was stressful at the time but it was a a really important pivot point for us because it allowed us to put in this structure we basically created a process of when we have a conflict how are we going to handle it because we have you know businesses like we have processes for everything so when we get a new lead in when we get somebody that accepts an estimate whatever it is there's those processes in place but we didn't have anything for when it hits the fan between the two of us right so we sort of set up this process of this is how we're going to take care of it this is how we're going to take our time apart and making sure that we sort of give a little cool off period and come back and also having those roles and responsibilities it takes away some of that guesswork so now we know that if if there's a decision to be made on the back end of the business on estimating whatever it is that's going to be my call if there's a decision to be made about how we're going to attach those four feet of railing that one's on jesse so Mm. we, we just sort of avoid that potential for conflict well, that's great advice. I love how you realize you have all these processes for all these things, but not conflict. And conflict's probably more important than all those things yeah. come together. And uh, so that's really helpful. Christine, how often do family meetings for business happen? Luckily, knock on wood, it doesn't happen too often. We are very good about keeping personal things and what's going on amongst the family outside of our employees so they don't see it. Because we want to show them that we are a strong family unit and our goal is to give them a career. And if we show instability, conflict or things like that, it could scare a really good employee off. We want to show them that we're strong and we're a unit and that, and we work together and we can resolve conflict. So A, we're really good about that. But when we feel like tensions are rising after hours, it, it has to be at night, you know, mm. not at the shop, it's at our homes. We call a family meeting and then we talk about everything. 
and we leave with it resolved. It has to be resolved. You have to move on. If you want to be a part of the company, you have to be able to deal with this level of conflict, just as you do in any relationship, a friendship, a marriage between two colleagues, a boss to an employee. You have to maintain those relationships. But when it's family, it's usually all rules are out the window. And you have to remind everybody, "Mm -mm, we're Mm -hmm. still colleagues, we're friends, we're family, we're all of the above. Me and my husband like to refer to each other as a power couple. We want to empower other couples to go into business together because if it's done right, it can be really powerful and it could influence a lot of other people. That's a great segue, Christine. So what are some benefits? What are the... What are the benefits of being in business together? Zach, why don't you start? I love the fact that we have that deep knowledge of each other and what our history is. And I feel like that really helps, especially when times get hard. We both share the same kind of fears and we know what those are. So it's really easy for people sometimes in business to be really guarded with what their real motivation is, including the fear, including the negative sides that motivate them to succeed. Because I feel like that's probably a a bigger driver than anything else is the avoidance of, of all of that negative stuff, the fears and the possibility of failure and whatever is a huge driver for people to work really hard and get to the place that they want to be. So another huge benefit is that that trust and that kind of loyalty that you have towards each other because you're in a family. The family is is always going to be there, right? You're never going to part ways, even if you decide to, you know, move on from the business for whatever reason. You, you have that dedication to each other on such a deep personal level that I feel it makes it easier to, to sort of try to apply that and keep that in mind when you're working together on the business that, you know, you, you both trust each other and that you know that you have each other's best interests in heart and that you have the, the best interests of the business at heart. I totally agree. I think trust is a huge component. It's someone to call if you are unable to pick up your workload. You know, I'm here and I know that my mother-in-law is covering for me in the office. You know, there was one time that it looked like someone broke into our shop. It wasn't an actual break-in, but an officer identified an open door and lights on and, you know, something looked a little shady. And we were able to call our brother-in-law because he was a lot closer than we were at the time and say like, hey, can you go check out the shop and make sure everything is okay? And he cares. So like he went. So there's someone to rely on no matter what the tensions are currently like at the moment. So that feels good. And the other component is throughout the year when you bring everyone together, either for a team meeting or we have like a a clear view day, it's an employee appreciation day or a holiday party or whatever time where all the employees are in one room, we like sit together and we're like, we just did this. Like we like, you know what I mean? Like we were maybe cursing each other out last week, but like we did this, like we have given these people jobs. We've given them careers. We're essentially feeding families. We're helping them build their goals and dreams. We, we have a company vision board. So we put all of our employees visions on that board because we want to help each other. So when you step back and look at what you've built I couldn't have done that myself. My husband couldn't have done it myself. My father-in-law, my mother-in-law, none of us could have done it on our own. We each bring something special to the company and it seems like conflict at certain points, but when it all comes together, we built the perfect puzzle. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's awesome. Earlier, you mentioned uh, feeling like a power couple mm-hmm. and then we went to segue, but go back to that. Talk about uh, being a couple, couple in business. So... Somehow we work really well with each other in business. I anticipated more conflict actually. And there is not much conflict when it comes to me and Freddie in business. And I think it's because we both have different passions and we know that we're good at different things. He's fantastic at marketing. He's like a marketing genius. I know that I'm like an operations person. I'm a numbers person. I like to be behind the scenes. I want to sit behind the computer and analyze everything, analyze this, analyze that, solve every problem. So when we bring that together, we do feel really powerful. And what we've learned over the years through people we've met through Jobber and at different conventions and expos and stuff is there are a lot of women leaving their corporate jobs and joining forces with their spouses. And we want to encourage that because when you do join forces properly and you're on the same page and you're aligned in your vision and your goals and your dreams and your aspirations as a couple, you can do something great. And outside of that, we cheer each other on with personal um, objectives. So like we both work at the company, 
But a personal objective of mine is opportunities like this and public speaking and motivating people and helping others. You know what I mean? And my husband has personal objectives of like coaching and like really like diving deep and like going through other people's numbers and stuff. So we're cheering each other on to also check some boxes personally. When you're a small business, you're so heavily invested in the business, almost with blinders on that you lose yourself. So to be able to have somebody to cheer you on to complete objectives outside of your actual business really feels good. Wow, that's great. Let's talk about one more thing before we wrap up, which is finances. Zach, we'll start with you. So I, I think something that I always try to keep at the forefront of my mind is that friends are friends and business is business. It's something that, that I heard a long time ago and it always really stuck with me. And I think that it's important to have that hard line between the two of them because you never want to feel like someone in your family is using the company as their personal piggy bank. And I know that it can be a little bit more challenging if it's a smaller company, uh, you know, if you haven't incorporated yet, if you're just a registered business. Business, it can be really tempting to just have everything flow through you personally, but it gets way too complicated to try and keep track of what the expenses are coming out of and how much income is actually being placed where. So I think it's really important to definitely never put anything into your personal account. You have a dedicated business account, no matter how small it is or how you know infrequently active it is at the beginning. You start up that business account. That way you see exactly what the finances are. And the way that I like to think about it is even if you don't have an exit strategy of selling the company, even if you, you, you plan to pass it down to your family, you plan to pass it down to your kids, you still want to make sure that on paper your finances are clean. And I'm not talking about cooking the books, right? You want to make sure that if you're profitable, that you're showing that profitability and that you're really reining in all of your numbers because I'm the same way as you, Christine. I love all that background stuff that a lot of people, uh, you know, I find in the trades, a lot of people are really great at the trades, but not necessarily great at business and that's not exactly a fault and I feel like that's part of the beauty of of you know the the partnership that I have with Jesse is he's really great on site and he has an eye for details that I just could never have he has the patience to work on these small you know finishing aspects of a project that I just I can't even wrap my head around um, the same way that the last thing he would want to do is be in a meeting going over finishes and budgets with clients and stuff like that so yeah I, I think it's really important to to have that separation between uh, the the personal in the business so that you can both feel really confident that if you did want to sell the company, it would be attractive to an investor. It would be attractive as a buyout. And if you don't sell that company, you're no further behind for doing it. Yeah. Sellability is a great measure for how healthy your business is. Christine, if you're making sure that the numbers are right, then you can tell if a family member is not pulling their weight or maybe they're just not making enough money. Sometimes when it's family, it almost becomes deserving of a larger piece of the pie. And the reality is we are still working towards the greater good of building this company and protecting its net, right? For sellability, for things like that, potential franchising. There are so many opportunities, reinvesting, growing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. When you have a lot of family members on board, everyone expects to be paid larger than what an employee doing that job would be making. Mm. And that's a mindset that is very dangerous because there's almost no going back. When you overpay somebody, it cuts into the net and you're not producing. The output is not measuring to what you just paid out, right? So everyone's working really hard. It's not taken away from that, but the pay has to match what the company can afford. That's what's tricky with family. And again, that's okay right? You have to have the decision. Is this the best place for everybody? You do deserve to be making more money. We just can't support that right now. Mm. You know, I hope we can one day. I want to be that company, but we can't. We're still small. So those are conversations that you have to have. They don't have to be negative. Nothing has to be negative. The thing is conflict can sometimes be healthy if it's managed properly. So butting heads is sometimes okay. That's what generates growth, right? So if you just have these healthy conversations with family members, even early on, what are what is that person's expectations? How much do they want to be making in five years? Based on my projections, we're not going to be able to afford to give you that. Are you still okay with coming on board with what we can afford? If not, this isn't the best fit, but I still love you, you know? And I think that's very important. Absolutely. So as we wrap up, there's some listeners out there that are thinking about getting into business with their family. What advice would you give them? to get started. Christine, why don't you start? 
I would say to have a good conversation beforehand and sit with each other, almost hug it out before you even have the conversation and say, no matter which way this goes, we're still family, we're all good. But these are some things that we have to identify. What are your roles and responsibilities? What are my roles and responsibilities? What are our guidelines? What are our rules? Me and my husband do not check emails at bedtime. Like there's no, we used to bring our laptop into bed Mm -hmm. and that would be a nightmare. So like we don't do that anymore. So set boundaries immediately and talk about money. You have to talk about money. It's very uncomfortable, but you have to talk about money. Have this discussion up front so that everything is clear. Talk about bonuses. Talk about everything up front so that there are no surprises and no one's let down. And then say, I really want us to both make a very good educated decision whether this is a good fit for us. I feel this way. How do you feel? That's well said. Yeah, I love that. I got to say the same thing, right? That having that clear communication is so key because if you're being guarded, it's not going to work well for the business. It's not going to work well for the personal relationship either. So I think to be as transparent as possible, instilling that right from the get-go, that you're both on the same page, that you're not kind of holding back or hiding what what your real goal is. You want to make sure that you're both out for the exact same thing. And I think making sure that you start early on right away, that's separation of kind of the family and the business so that you know that if one gets harmed, the other one is safe kind of thing. So you don't want to worry about, you know, am I, am I going to lose a brother? Am I going to lose a husband mm-hmm. if something goes south with the business? And same thing, vice versa, right? I, I, I want to know that if my brother and I have a, an argument on the weekend that it's not going to affect the business on Monday kind of thing. So we're, we're lucky that we don't really have that. But I think having that as a safeguard, it's a safety because conflict is inevitable. It's going to happen at some point. So having that set up right from the get-go, it's easier to do it when you're both on the same page, when you're both excited, when you're in that building phase, because that's the fun part of business is starting it up Mm -hmm. and watching it grow and sort of, you know, setting up those goals and then building that, that little empire that you have. Mm -hmm. And then it's when things get hard, once you're experiencing that growth, once all the money is involved, once all the headaches are involved and the, the stress of deadlines and timelines and all that stuff, then it can be really difficult to go back and say, well, you know, I think this should be the role and that should be your role and that should be my decision to make. So I think it's really important to set that up when you're both in that honeymoon phase right from the gate so that everybody knows, you know, what lane that they're in, like you said, Christine. 100%. That was so well said. It was. Yeah. Yeah. My three takeaways from the conversation, which was really good. Number one, clear communication. Clear communication is the solution to conflict. Number two is clearly assigned roles. Number three, uh, clear numbers. Know your numbers. Talk about money, like Christine said. Zach, Christine, this is a great conversation. How do people find out more about you? I can be found on Instagram at Christine S. Hodge or at Clearview Washing. And I'm also on Facebook, Christine Hodge or Clearview Washing. Across social media, we're at MTL Contractors. If you like this episode, please like it, subscribe to it, review it. It helps us get the word out to more small business owners like you.